Hello everyone, welcome back to our virtual Mishtaburah here. We're holding in the Mishtaburah Chalik Aleph, and we will be learning today Mitzvah Hashem, Tav Chav Tes Amit Aleph. We are continuing to learn Hilchas Tzitzitz. We begin a new simon today, Chav Tes Amit Aleph, top line. Simon Yud Zayin, Mi Heim HaChayovim B'Tzitzitz, who are those that are obligated in the Mitzvah of Tzitzitz, Ubay Gimel Seifim, and here we have three Seifim. <coughs> Says the Mechav Sif Aleph, Afal Gav Diksiv Uri Isem Oisai, even though the Pasuk in the Parsha of Tzitzitz says Uri Isem Oisai, that you should see the Tzitzitz, Suma Chayiv B'Tzitzitz, still in all, a blind individual who cannot see is obligated in the mitzvah of Tzitzitz. Why? I, it says Uri Isem Oisai, it says you have to be able to see them, so how is a Suma who can't see Chayiv? Explains to Mechaber, the reason he's chayiv is mipnei is rabba because he is included in the mitzvah of tzitzitz by another phrase in the pasuk, where the pasuk says me asher techaseba. The pasuk in the Torah Toisha says gedilim tasalecha. You should make tzitzitz fringes al arba kanfei al arba kanfei on the four corners of your garment asher techaseba that you cover yourselves with. Now the phrase, Asher Techaseba, is extraneous. Why do we need that phrase? So from an extraneous phrase in the Torah, we have a riboy. We see that the Pasuk is coming to include something. What do we say the Torah is coming to include? The Torah is coming to include a Summa. I would have thought that because it says, Uri Isai, Uri Isai is coming to be Mimait, it's coming to exclude a summa who cannot see. Kamash no. We have a phrase, asher techaseba, that comes to include a summa. Aye. Now, what do we do with uri isem oisai? Uri isem oisai, it, it seems to be coming to exclude something. It has to be uri isem oisai. It has to be that you could see them. So what's that coming to exclude? Explains the Mechaber. Ukra uduri isem oisai. The Pasuk of Uri Isam Isai, it's trick we need, Lebma'it, to exclude Ksus Laila, a garment that is made to be worn at night, like pajamas that are putter in Sitzitz. So to wrap up Sif Aleph over here, what's the Makabra telling us? We have two different phrases in the Pasuk. We have the phrase Uri Isam Isai, that indicates that you need to be able to see the Sitzitz. That seems to be a mute. That seems to be coming to exclude something. Your chayv to put tzitzitz on a four-cornered garment, but it has to be uri isem oisai. So that comes to exclude something. We have another extraneous phrase in the Pasuk, where the Pasuk says, asher techasabai, which is extra. And we know that the Torah Doisha never has extra words. So those extra words would seem to be coming as a ribui, to include something. So what do we do? We say that Uri Isam Isai comes to exclude Big Day Lila, uh, clothes that are meant to be worn at night. At night, it's dark. So absent artificial light, at night, you cannot see a Begit Shalila. So Uri Isam Isai comes to exclude a Begit Lila. And the extra words are shared to Kasabai, those come to include the Begit of a blind person. Now the Mishnah is going to tackle who said that we should exclude this one and include that one. Maybe we should do it the other way. Maybe we should say that Uri Isam Isai comes to exclude the Beget of a Summa, the Beget of a blind person, and Asher Techasabai comes to include Big Delilah, who says we should do it the other way. Maybe we should do it this way. So that the Mishnah is going to tackle, and we'll see that in a moment. But there's another point that I want to bring out which is, it's very interesting. We're saying that the phrase asher techaseba is extra. And since asher techaseba is extra, we use it to include the begot of a summa. What's interesting about that is that we actually used the phrase of asher techaseba earlier. Back in Simon Yud, all the way in the beginning of Simon Yud, on Daf Yud Zayin Amit Beis, Simon Yud Mishtabura Ice Cotton Beis, over there, the Mechaber had told us that what kind of Begit is Chayv in Tzitzitz? A Begit of Arba Kanfais, a four-cornered Begit. A Begit of Gimel Kanfais, 
a three-cornered baguette is not chayiv and tzitzitz. We know that because the Pasuk says, Gedilim ta'asalacha al arba kanfais ksusacha. What kind of baguette is chayiv? A baguette of arba kanfais, but not three. How about a baguette of five kanfais? A baguette of chamisha kanfais? Is that chayiv? Maybe we should say no. Only a baguette of dalit kanfais is chayiv. But chamisha kanfais is potter. So the Mishnah told us that no, a baguette of chamisha kanfais is chayiv. How do we know? Because we have the extra words asher techasibah. Asher techasibah is a riboy that comes to include a baguette of chamisha kanfais. Now, if we already used asher techasibah to teach us the halach of a baguette of chamisha kanfais, how could we use asher techasibah over here and claim that it's extra and use it to include a baguette of asuma? So the Beis Yosef asks this kasha, and the Beis Yosef is forced to say that the Beget of Chamisha Kanfais we're learning from the extra word Asher. And the Halacha of a Beget of Asuma, we learn from the extra words of Techaseba. Because we're not learning anything from the implication of the words. We're not learning out these Halachas from the meaning of the words Asher Techaseba. We're only darshaning the extra words the Tarak Doisha doesn't give us extra words. So if we see words in the Tarak Doisha that seem to be extra, we could learn a halacha from the Yatura, from the extraneous nature of the Lashon, of the words. We could learn halachas. So we have Asher and we have Techasaba. So we can learn out both halachas. Now let's see the Mishnaburi here, Ois Kot and Aleph. First, the Chavetz Chaim tells us, when we say that the Begit of Asuma is Chayi B'tzitzit, says the Chavetz Chaim, Upashit, and it is simply understood, the Yachel of Arach Gam Ken Not only is the Begit of Asuma Chayi B'tzitzit, but a blind person can make a bracha on tzitzit as well. Ach, only, you have to be careful, says the Chavetz Chaim, even though he's blind, She Yivdaik Aisan Mitchila, he still has to do a Bedika, he still has to check the Kashris of a tzitzit to make sure that he's not making a bracha of Atala. So actually, give Daikai son Metchila, first he has to check the tzitzits. How is he going to check the tzitzits if he cannot see? Says the Chavetz Chaim, he'll do it yodav, by feeling the strings with his fingers to sense if they're intact. Remember, a blind individual, his other senses become much sharper. So using his sense of touch, he'll feel the strings, even where the strings are coils and knots. He could feel them to see that they're not torn and that they are intact. Uh, or alternatively, says the Chavetz Chaim, Yevake He could ask somebody else to check them for him. Ice cotton bays, Ksosalila. We learn out from Reisem Isai that Ksosalila, like pajamas, a beggar that's meant to be worn at night, is not Chaim and Sitzis. So we ask the question who says that Reisem Isai? should come to exclude pajamas, and Asher Tachasabai should come to include the Begit of Asuma, maybe we should do it the other way. Let's say that Reisa Maisai comes to exclude the Begit of Asuma, and Asher Tachasabai comes to include pajamas. Who says we should do it this way or that way? So the Mishtabur explains that there actually is a compelling svara. There's a compelling rationale to learn it this way. Says the Chavaz Chaim, Vasvara Naisenes, the svara, the the <clears throat> the simply the common sense, I guess you might say, noisenes tells us that it makes more sense le ksus suma to include the beged of a blind person and say that the beged of a blind person is obligated in tzitzitz, or le and to exclude ksus lila and to say that the ksus lila is not included. Why? Wait, what's the svara? Explains the Chavetz Chaim a very interesting svara. Mishum dixus suma yeshnei al kol panim b'riia etzal acherim. The beged of a suma is not invisible. You want to exclude something from uriisem oisai. Uriisem oisai means you shall see them. So you want to say, okay, the requirement is one of the requirements of tzitzitz is you shall see them. Asuma, you can't see his garment. So we have this question. What should we exclude from Ru'isem Isai? Should we exclude the garment of a blind person because he can't see that garment? Or should we exclude the pajamas, the Beged Lila, 
because the Beged Laila cannot be seen because it's dark. Explains the Chavetz Chaim. The Svara says that so you shall see them should come to exclude the pajamas. You know why? Because the pajamas are invisible. Nobody could see the Beged Shalila unless you have a flashlight or unless you have a light switch and you can turn on the lights. But naturally speaking, at night you can't see. It's dark. So the Beged Laila is technically invisible to everybody. The Beged of a Summa is not invisible. The Summa can't see the Beged. But everybody else who has normal vision can see the Beged. So which one makes more sense to exclude from a Re'isa Maisai that gives us a requirement of being able to see? Makes more sense to exclude the Beged Laila. Because that's invisible to all. While the Beged of the Summa is only invisible to the Summa. Let's see it inside. Mishum de Summa, the Beged of the blind individual, Yeshtayal Kalpanim Bere'iya Eitzalacherim. That could at least be seen by other people. Avoksos Laila, but the Beged Laila, Einoi Bere'iya Eitzalacherim. That is invisible. It cannot be seen by anybody. And therefore, it makes more sense to exclude the Beged Laila from Uri Isemaisai. Okay, now we go to a very interesting sif. I guess you could say, especially in light of events over the last few years. Let's see sif base. Says the Mechaber, Noshim, women, va'avadim, and avde kenanim, peturim, are exempt from the mitzvah of tzitzitz, mipnei shehi mitzvah sasei shazman grama, because the mitzvah to wear tzitzitz is time dependent. Literally, mitzvah sasei, it's a positive commandment, shazman grama, that is brought about by time. What does it mean it's brought about by time? You can only be mekayim the mitzvah during a specific time. So that time brings the mitzvah. Why is tzitzis a mitzvah say shazman grama? Because like we're going to see very shortly in Simen Yilches, Laila loves man tzitzisi. Nighttime is not a time that we have the obligation of tzitzis. So you're only obligated in tzitzis during the day. So it's zman grama. The arrival of the time of the day brings with it the mitzvah of tzitzis. A mitzvah, a mitzvah sasei shazman grama, a woman is exempt. And an evet kanani is exempt the same way a woman is. Now we're going to see in the Mishnabrura where we learn that a woman is exempt from a mitzvah sasei shazman grama. But why? Ultimately, why is a mitzvah exempt? Is a woman exempt from a mitzvah sasei shazman grama? So what the Mepharshim tell us is, one of the reasons is, a woman is under Rishos Acherim. A woman has an obligation to her husband. A woman has an obligation to her household. A woman has an obligation to her children. Yes, women have a specific role. They don't have Chas Khalila, a lesser role than men. People try to pervert the Torah and they try to say that women have a lesser role. There are women who look at the Torah and they interpret the Torah as chas v'chalilu, the Torah telling them, telling them that they are somehow secondary. That is completely a falsehood. Women are not secondary at all. Women are primary. But a man has a role and a woman has a role. They have two different roles. And in the proper role of a woman, a woman has shibudim. A woman is obligated to the household a woman is obligated to her husband and she needs to be free for those obligations. Now, if you're going to tie a woman down to a mitzvah, if you're going to tell a woman that she has to do a specific mitzvah during a specific time frame, what if her various obligations now conflict? The Torah did not want a woman to have those conflicting obligations. The Torah did not want to have a scenario where a woman is going to say she cannot fulfill the needs of her husband and her household because what do you mean? I was busy being with Kaya Mitzvahs. So the Torah Dosha said, no, those mitzvahs, a man has to be Mekayim. A woman is not Mekayim then, not because she's lesser, but because she has other obligations that the Torah places on her. She has a different Torah role that takes precedence. And that's why she's not obligated in these mitzvahs. 
So again, the Mechaber tells us, women, Abde Kenanim, they are exempt from the Mitzvah Tzitzitz. Why? Because it's a Mitzvah say Shazman Grama. Let's first take a look, before we go weiter, at Mishtabura is Kut Gimel. Says the Chavetz Chaim. It's a Mitzvah say Shazman Grama. Why is it a Mitzvah say Shazman Grama? Taba Laila, Lazman Tzitzitzu. Because night is not as man to be kind of mitzvah tzitzitz. And therefore, the obligation of tzitzitz is only upon you during the day. So it's a mitzvah say shazman gram. How do we know that a woman is exempt from a mitzvah say shazman grama? So the Chavetz Chaim tells us, the chal mitzvah say shazman grama, noshim peturais mehem, afilu bidurabonon. Any mitzvah say shazman grama, any time dependent mitzvah, a woman is exempt, not only is she biblically exempt, She's even exempt from the Rabbanon. She doesn't even have the Rabbanon de Kechiv to do a mitzvah say Shazban Grama. Where do we learn this out from? So the Chavetz Chaim explains that we learn this out from Tefillin. The Hoksha Kala Torah L'Tefillin. We find that the Torah compares the entire Torah to the mitzvah of Tefillin. How do we see that? Diksiv Bahu, because by Tefillin, the Torah Agdoshah tells us Let's get the in the whole pasuk here. I should have a chumash. I have a Tanakh right here. It's in Shmois Yud Gimel. Shmois Yud Gimel. This is Parshas Bay near the end of Parshas Bay. The Pasuk, the Torah Doshi is talking about Tefillin. And the Torah Doshi says that the Tefillin should be, they should be for you, as a sign on your hand, and as a remembrance, on your forehead, between the eyes. For what purpose? So that the words of the Torah Doshi should be in your mouths. Also as a remembrance to Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim. So we see that we have the Pasuk that is discussing, whoops, I hit my mouse. Let me make sure everything is still working properly. Uh, yes, we are still recording. Okay. We see that the Torah Daisha is talking about the mitzvah of Tefillin. And the Torah Daisha says, Hashem b'ficha. So we see that the Torah is making a heckish, is making a comparison between the mitzvah saseh of tefillin and kala Torah kula. What does that tell us? Says the Chavetz Chaim. de betura is mitfillin. And we know that women are exempt from tefillin. How do we know women are exempt from tefillin? Explains the Chavetz Chaim. De iskish letalma Torah. Because again, tefillin is compared to the mitzvah of learning Torah. And by the mitzvah of learning Torah, the Ksiv Ba, it's the Torah says by the mitzvah of learning Torah, Vishinantam Libanecha. You have a chiv to teach Torah to your sons. And we learn out from there, Veloy Livnoisecha, to your sons, but not to your daughters. So what do we have so far? We have the mitzvah I say of Limud Torah. Who is obligated in Limud Torah? A man. How do we know that? Vishinantam Libanecha, Veloy Livnoisecha. So we know that only men are chayiv, are obligated, in the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. The mitzvah of Talmud Torah is compared to tefillin. So the same way women are exempt from the mitzvah of Talmud Torah, they are also exempt from the mitzvah of tefillin. And then the mitzvah of tefillin is compared to Kala Torah Kula. So just like women are exempt from the mitzvah of tefillin, which is a mitzvah say Shazman Grama, they are also exempt from any other mitzvah in Kala Tarakula if it's a mitzvah say Shazman Grama. Kain Peturais, Mikal Mitzvah say Shazman Grama. Vavadim, and as far as an Evit Kanani, Yalfinan Bigzera Shava, we learn out that an Evit Kanani is exempt from a mitzvah say Shazman Grama because we learn out La, La, La Meisha. We learn out Bigzera Shava. The Tarak Doshi uses the word La in the context of a woman, and it uses the word la in the context of an Evid Kanani, and therefore we make Gzeri Shavah, and we learn the Chal Mitzvah Shel Isha Petura, any mitzvah, where a woman is exempt from that mitzvah, 
Gamo Evid Potter, so to an Evid Kenani or Shivka Kenanis is also exempt. Okay, so so far here in Sif Bays, <coughs> we have established that women and Avadim are exempt from the mitzvah of Tzitzitz because it is a mitzvah say Shazman Grama, and women and, our, and Avadim are exempt from all mitzvah say Shazman Grama. We learn that out from Tfilin. Women are exempt from Tfilin. We know women are exempt from Tfilin because they're exempt from the mitzvah of Talmud Torah, and we learn out Tfilin from Talmud Torah. Once we know they're exempt by Tfilin, Tfilin is compared to Kala Torah Kula, so the same way they're exempt by Tfilin, which is a mitzvah say Shazman Grama, they're exempt from any other mitzvah say in the Torah that is also a mitzvah say Shazman Grama. All right, so women are exempt from tzitzis. Now, says the Rama, oh, let's go back into the Shulchan Aruch, three lines down. Haga, umikamokayim, nevertheless, says the Rama, even though women are exempt from the mitzvah of tzitzit, says the Rama, im roitzim la'atvoy, if they want to be misatef in a talus, if they want to wrap themselves in a talus, ulevareich alav, and even to make a bracha of lehisatef pa on that talus, Harishus Biyadam says the Rama, technically they are allowed to do that. Now, technically they are allowed to do that. We're gonna to have to see a lot of caveats here. Technically they're allowed to do that. Kemay Bishar Mitzvah Grama, just like any other Mitzvah Grama. For example, Lulav and Esrig. Women are exempt from Lulav and Esrig because Lulav and Esrig is a Mitzvah Grama. But a woman wants to come home. She wants to take her husband's Zulu and Esrik, be Mekai in the mitzvah, and, and make the bracha. They're allowed to, 100%. And many of our women do so. So, no problem. So, says the Ramah, technically speaking, a woman is exempt from the mitzvah of tzitzitz because it's a mitzvah say Shazman Grama. But if she wants to put on a talis and make a bracha on it, Harishus Biyadam. But, says the Ramah, the first caveat we have here says the Ramah, ah, however, mechsi ki yuhara. A woman who does that looks like a balas gaiva. It's self-aggrandizement. She's taking on a mitzvah that is not for her. And that's, you're making yourself a yuhara. You're making yourself some kind of, uh, you know, you're showing off. You're making yourself greater than you are. Velachain, and therefore, says the Ramah, Ein lahen lilbosh tzitzitz. They are not to wear tzitzitz. Now, if we stop right over there, we're left with a question. What did the Ramah say? The Shechan said women are exempt from wearing tzitzitz. Why? The Ramah said, while they're exempt, they could be Mekai in the mitzvah, and they could even make a bracha, just like any other mitzvah shazman grama. What's the example I gave you? Lulav and Esrik. Women take Lulav and Esrik, they make a bracha. No problem. Yet, says the Ramah, but they should not do it by tzitzitz. They should not do it. Why? Mezi ki yuara. They shouldn't do it. And he says, Velochein ein lehen lilbosh tzitzitz. Women should not wear tzitzitz. They should not put on the talus. No, they should not go to the kaisal and put on a talus. Says the Ramah, they should not do it. Now, again, if we stop here, we have a kasha. What's different between here and Lulav and Esrik? The Ramah doesn't tell us by Lulav and Esrik that women should not take Lulav and Esrik because it's Mexic Yuara. So the Ramah gives the answer right now. Says the Ramah, there's another critical difference. Not another. There is a critical difference between this Mitzvah Sasei Shazman Grama, the Mitzvah of Tzitzitz, and another Mitzvah Sasei Shazman Grama like Lulav. What's that critical difference? Says the Ramah. Hayil ve'enoi chayvas gavra. Because the mitzvah of tzitzis is not a chiv on the person. What does that mean? Now, somebody else other than the Ramah, I don't know who this was, but somebody else was kind enough to insert into the words of the Shulchan Aruch here, Shulchan Aruch here an explanation of what this means. Pirush. The explanation of this is, Enoi chayiv liknoi sloi talis. Even a man who has a chi of darais of tzitzis has no chi of to go buy a baguette of dalad confis, put tzitzis on it, and wear it. 
Kedei she is chayiv betzitzitz. A man has no obligation to go buy a four-cornered garment so that he should obligate himself in the chayiv of tzitzitz. So the distinction is, by Lulav and Esrig, a man is a chayiv. A man is obligated to go get a Lulav and Esrig and be mekayim the mitzvah of Lulav and Esrig. It's a chayiv gavra. It's a chayiv on the person that he must fulfill that mitzvah. So even though a woman doesn't have that obligation, but since it's a mitzvah that at least a man has an obligation to fulfill, so if a woman also wants to fulfill it, harishus piyadai, she's permitted to go do so, and she can even make a brach on it. But tzitzit is not that way. Even a man, technically speaking, a man could go without being a kind of mitzvah tzitzit. If he doesn't have a begot of Dal Confess, he has no mitzvah. There is no mitzvah. And you're not mechuyiv to go buy a begot of Dal Confess so that you should be obligated in the tzitzit. Now, the later Pais could say that Klai Yisrael was the Kabul on themselves, that we shouldn't go Dal Amis without a begot of Dal Confess with tzitzit on it so that we should be surrounded with mitzvahs, so that we should have the constant reminder of your Shemayim and the mitzvahs on us. But that's not a chiv daraisa. Midaraisa. We, generally speaking, don't wear four-cornered garments. Some of the rice, if I don't have a bag of, 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 of four corners, I don't have to go buy one. And then I won't be in the midst of tzitzitz. So it's not the same. That's why a woman, yes, they go be in the midst of lulav, because that's a chi of gavra. Every man has, has an obligation. He has to go be in that mitzvah. So a woman also wants to go be in that mitzvah. That's not mechzi kiyuara. That's no problem. But the mitzvah of tzitzit, even the man, strictly speaking, doesn't have the chiv to go ahead and be mekayim that mitzvah. So for a woman to do it is mechzi ki So that's the first caveat we have here. Even though, yes, tzitzit, the only reason a woman is exempt is because it's a mitzvah say shas ban grama. And usually by mitzvah say shas ban grama, we say if a woman wants to do it, go ahead and make a bracha. Not so by tzitzit. So anybody stops you and says the whole tumult about the women on the wall and they want to wear a talus and everything else, what's the problem? The answer is it's a Befeir Shurama. So Befeir Shurama that they are not to do so. Befeir Shurama. I what's the difference between that in the midst of Lulav? Here we have the difference. The difference is Lulav is a Chavis Gavra. This is not a Chavis Gavra. That's the first caveat. Now, before we go to the Mishnabura, let's just finish off the parentheses over here. We we said that the difference between tzitzit and let's say lulav is that tzitzit is not a chayvus gavra. Now the problem with that is that very shortly we're going to see in Simon Yudtes the opening words of the Mechaber in Simon Yudtes Sif Aleph is are tzitzit chayvus gavra who tzitzit are a chayvus gavra. So what do you mean? It's not a chayvus gavra. So he explains, what do I mean? It's not a chayvus gavra. Well, come on, besimin yutes amar. Later on in simin yutes, when we say that tzitzis is a chayvus gavra, what all that means is kishe yeshloi talus by arba kanfleis when he has a beged of four corners v'loiv shay and he puts it on, then he has a chayvus gavra to put tzitzis on. But he doesn't have a chayvus gavra to go get a beged of dal kanfus. With tzitzitz, to go be mekayim, the mitzvah of tzitzitz. Okay. Now, let's take a look here at the Mishnah Says the Mishnah is cut and dalit. Excuse me. The Mechabra said, <coughs> the Ramah said, I'm sorry, that even though a woman is exempt from the mitzvah of tzitzitz because it's a mitzvah say she has my grandma, Said the Rabbah, Umikabakim, nevertheless, in Reitzim, La'atfai, if they want to put on a talus, or Levarech, Allah, to make a bracha, or a Shuspiyadam. Those are the words of the Rambo. Says the Mishnah, is Dalat, or Levarech, Allah. They could even make a bracha. Now, there's two basic questions that we need to answer when we deal with a woman making a bracha on a mitzvah, say, Shazban Grama. The first question is a bracha is Shavach Vahidah. It's praise and thanks to the Rabbani Shalom. 
even in Berchas HaMitzvahs, right, we usually differentiate between Berchas HaNenin, Berchas Heda, a bracha of thanks, and a Berchas HaMitzvahs. A Berchas HaMitzvahs is a different category. But even a Berchas HaMitzvahs is a form of Shevach Vahida, with thanking the Rabbi Nishalom for something. That's the simple translation of the words, even by Berchas HaMitzvahs. So one question we have to answer is, why is it appropriate for a woman to thank the Rabbi Nishalom for a mitzvah that she is not commanded to fulfill? On a certain level, it's not her mitzvah. So how is she thanking the Rabbi Nishalom for it? The second question is, how does a woman say vitzivanu? Vitzivanu means, and he commanded us. A woman is not commanded. How could she say vitzivanu? So the Mishnah Ruh comes to answer both of these questions. Says the Mishnah Ruh, Kandalut Ulavarechalov. The woman could make a bracha samitzvah. She could make a bracha on the talus. Explains the Chavetz Chaim. It's appropriate for her to make a bracha and say shavach ba'ida. Da'af mi she'enoi mitzvah va'oise, because even somebody who's not actually commanded in the mitzvah, enoi mitzvah, she's not commanded va'oise, and yet she performs the mitzvah. Yesh loy schar. She gets schar. Even if you're not commanded to fulfill a particular mitzvah, it is a mitzvah. It is a form of service to the Bari Olam. So if you perform that mitzvah, you will get schar. So therefore, says the Chavetz Chaim, you want to know why it's appropriate for a woman to get shavach v'haidah? Of course it's appropriate. She's performing an act that she will receive reward from the Rabbi Nishalom for. So for that, she gives Shevach Vahida. That's the answer to the first question. Now, as far as the Vitzivanu, says the Mishnabura, Vishayich Lemar Vitzivanu, it is also appropriate for her to say Vitzivanu. Why? So this is a little tricky, the phraseology of the Mishnabura here. First of all, says the Chavetz Chaim, Kevon Shehoanoshim Nitztavu, since men are commanded in the mitzvah. So first of all, you have to realize the word vitzivanu is a Lashon Rabbim. Vitzivanu means Asher Kiddushanu who has sanctified us, Lashon Rabbim. Vitzivanu and commanded us. Who is the us? The us is Klal Yisrael. Now even a woman could make a bracha and say vitzivanu. A woman is also part of Klal Yisrael. So a woman could also say commanded us. Not me in particular. But Kla Yisrael as a whole. So that's one reason a woman can say Vitzivanu. Furthermore, Gam Heim Yesh Lahem Schar. And also, like we just said, the woman also gets Schar for performing the mitzvah. And the point of that is that that also helps her say Vitzivanu. Why? Because, yes, the word Vitzivanu goes on Kla Yisrael as a whole, it does not go on her personally. But even though the word Vitzivanu doesn't go on her personally, the fact that Kla Yisrael as a whole was commanded to do the mitzvah benefits the woman personally. Why? Because since Kla Yisrael as a whole was commanded to do this act, now that the woman does it, even though she personally is not commanded, she will get schar. But the schar is only generated by the fact that there is a tzivui, even though there's no tzivui to her. But there's a tzivui to Klai Yisrael. But the tzivui to Klai Yisrael affects her, because now that there's a tzivui, she gets schar. So it's appropriate for her to say vitzivanu. So with this very neat Mishtabura is cut and dalid, the Mishtabura answered both questions. He answered, how is it appropriate for the women to give shevach v'aydav for the mitzvah? Because they get schar. How is it appropriate for her to say Vitzivanu? Because Vitzivanu goes on Klai Yisrael as a whole. Aye, it's on Klai Yisrael as a whole, but not her personally. Yeah, but the Tzivu to Klai Yisrael as a whole benefits her because she gets her. Okay, now we go to Ois Kutnheim. What's the difference between, let's say, a Mitzvah Seishas Van Groma like Dalin Minim and a Mitzvah Seishas Van Groma of Tzitzitz? where by tzitzitz we say that a woman should not do it because it's mechzi ki yuara, but by a mitzvah like dal minim, we say go ahead and do it. So the Ramah explained the difference between tzitzitz and the others is that tzitzitz is not a chavis gavra. Says the Mishnah is cut in hay. Bazem itaritz lama mevarachai sanashim alulif. With this, the Ramah is answering why women 
perform the mitzvah of Dalaminim and they make the bracha of Alatilas Lulav. To a Ganke mitzvah say Shazman Grama, which is also a mitzvah say Shazman Grama. Fatir eats, and the Ramah is answering and explaining. Shani Hacha, over here in the mitzvah of Tzitzis is different. She'enoi Chavez Gavra, because it's not an obligation on a person that a person must fulfill. Sha'afilu Ish, because even a man who does have the Chiv of Tzitzis, Enolov Chiv Da'araisa, he does not have a Chiv Da'araisa, Liknois Talus Bas Arba Kanfais, to go out and buy a four cornered Beget to create an obligation of Tzitzis. Ella, rather, what's the Chiv? Im Misatev, if he puts on a Beget of Da'at Kanfais, Chayv Lasis by Tzitzis, then he's Chayv to affix Tzitzis onto it. Masha'en Kev Lulav, this stands in contrast to Lulav, the Gabi Ish, because the mitzvah of Dalminim by a man, who chayvaz gavra, it's a, an obligation on him. Shu chayvaz a guf. Now the da, and you should know, says to Mr. Brewer, that it's actually very interesting. Da non paskin on gabi tzitzitz, because it happens to be that we paskin la lacha by tzitzitz, that chayvaz gavra, in one sense, the mitzvah of tzitzitz is a chayvaz gavra, the law of chayvaz gavra. And in another sense, it's not a Chavis Kavra. Where do we see this duality? Explains the Chavis Chaim. The Tarvayu Lakula. We go leniently in both rulings. What does he mean? Chavis Gavra Lakula. We do consider Tzitzit to be a Chavis Gavra Lakula. And that creates a leniency, a Kula. Lemu'ute Chavis Mana. We say that the obligation of Tzitzit is an obligation upon the person, and it is not an obligation on the mona, on the item, on the beged. What does that mean? You can have as many four-cornered garments in your closet as you want. And as long as they're in the closet, you're not required to attach sisters to them. It's a chayvas gavra, v'loi chayvas mona. It's a chayva on the person. When he goes to wear the beged of Dal Confess, he has to put sisters. On that beggar of Dal Kampfis. But it's not a Chavis Mona. As long as the beggar of Dal Kampfis is residing in the closet, it doesn't have to be affixed with Tzitzitz. So, in that sense, it is a Chavis Gavra. Calls man chain a loyal shatalis as long as you don't wear the beggar. Alpha Pishesh, Labra Kampfis, even though it has four corners, Paturim and Tzitzitz is exempt from Tzitzitz. Lav Chavis Gavra. Where do we see that we treat Tzitzitz as not being a Chavis Gavra? Like we explained, there's no obligation to go acquire a beggar of Dal Confess so that you should be chayiv in tzitzis. It's not a chayiv's gavra. Rakim yesh talis be'abba confess. It's only that if you have a four-coated beggar, the life shine, you put it on, us chayiv in tzitzis, then you're chayiv in tzitzis. I am assuming you test if I'll. Okay, now let's go back to the Shulchan Aruch and let's continue Sif Beis. Four lines from the bottom near the end of the line. Says the Mechaber. Tumtum the androgynous. A tumtum is a, a fellow who has some kind of a skin or a membrane that is covering up the area of the genitalia. And therefore we cannot discern is he biologically a man or biologically a woman. And right away, we have a difference. If he's a man, he's obligated in tzitzitz. If he's a woman, he is not. Vandragonis, or an androgyne. What's an androgyne? An androgyne is a person who actually has the simonym of both. He has the simonym of a man and the simonym of a woman. Says the Shochet Aruch, how do we treat this person in the context of the mitzvah of tzitzitz? Says the Bechabra, Tumtum Vandragonis, Chayavim Misafik. They are obligated in the mitzvah of tzitzitz out of doubt, misafik. And therefore, v'yisatfu b'loi bracha, they should don a talus with tzitzitz, but without making a bracha. Pirush, the explanation of this is tumtum. Who's a tumtum? Loi noida imuzachar oinikeva. We cannot discern if he is a male or a female biologically. V'androgynus, what's an androgynus? Yesh loi zacharus v'nakvus. He has the simonim of both the male and the female. Hagah, the Ramah puts in here, The Mechaber says that the Tumtum and the Adragonis, 
they're chayiv mi suffolk, so they put on a talus without a bracha. Says the Ramah, we paskin that if a woman performs a mitzvah zeisha as ban grama, she can make a bracha. So in that case, says the Ramah, according to our minig, according to the minig b'nei Ashkenaz, that a woman who performs a mitzvah zeisha as ban grama makes a bracha, so then, says the Ramah, gam heim yavarchu. So then the tumtum and the androgynous should also make a bracha. Because again, the problem is that they're a suffolk. We don't know if they're a, ma- a male or a female. But says the Ramah, according to us, even if the tumtum of the androgynous is a female, so okay, she's being a makayim, a mitzvah says she's my grandma, and she's allowed to make a bracha. The mechaber said, no bracha. Because the mechaber paskins like the Rambam. The Rambam paskins that when a woman performs a mitzvah says she's my grandma, like Dalminim, she does not make a bracha. And that's why the Mechaber said, bracha. But the Ramah disagrees. The Ramah follows the Minik B'nai Ashkenaz that a woman could make a bracha on a Mitzvah Seishas Van Grama, and therefore the Tumtum and the Adragonis, who are Chayiv and Tzitzis Bisafik, they would make a bracha. Says the Mishnah is cut and vav. The Tumtum and the Adragonis, Chayav and Bisafik, they are obligated in the Mitzvah Tzitzis Bisafik. The Savik Torah Lechumra, because this is a Sveika Daraisa. A Savik Daraisa, you have to go Lechumra, so they're obligated. Kei Kasa Beis Yosef. Umash Bebizeh. The very clear implication of this is, to Dover Shechiyu Varak Midr Abanan, if you have a case where there's a Chiyu of Tzitz, it's only Midr Abanan, so it's not a Savik Daraisa, it's only a Savik Dar Abanan. Kikoyin, for example, Talis Shu'ula, a borrowed Talis, Akash Lo Shemyoyim, after 30 days, the Chanal was Simon Yodalad. We said in Simon Yodalad that a borrowed garment, the Begit Shaula, is not Chayim in Tzitzis. Why? Because there's a, 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 a prerequisite of Lohem, Vasu Lohem Tzitzis, Al Kanfe Big Dehem. So a borrowed garment is not Chayim in Tzitzis. You borrow a full corner garment from somebody, you're not Chayim to put Tzitzis on it. But the Shulchan Aruch taught us. If you borrow it for 30 days and you're wearing it for more than 30 days, then you have to put tzitzit on it, midrabonon. Why? Because of Marisayan. Because now it looks like you, this guy's been wearing this begging already for a month and he's wearing it without tzitzit. It looks like he doesn't believe in the mitzvah tzitzit. So Marisayan, there's a chiv derabonon that you have to put tzitzit on a begging shaula like a laban yoyim. But now, if a tumtum or an andragonist has a begging shaula, he's a borrowed begging for more than 30 days, now the suffix is only a suffix drabana, not a suffix daraisa. So he would be potter, because it's only a drabana. That's one example. I or alternatively, says the Chavitz Chaim, we'll give you another drabana. Bege chechiyuva irak bitam suffix. When you have a bege that's only chayiv in sitzis because of a suffix. Kigoin bege chechetsio y pasuach vechetsio y sasum vechanal besimin yud sivzayin. You have a bege that's opened up on the sides. Now, we said that in order to be considered a begot of Tal Confess, it has to be open the majority of the way on the sides. What if it's exactly 50 50? If it's exactly 50 50, there's a Chiv Drabanon. So if a Tumtum or a Dragonist has such a begot, it's only a Savi Drabanon. So he's Potter. So then, Rashan Lelech, Pobeloid Sitzitz. Vain, we're Prima Godim, Shakasaf, Oid, Keinze. Prima Godim writes similar to this. However, says the Chavitz Chaim, the Ulai, it is possible, the Yesh Lahachmer Bechalze, Memnemaris Ayin, that in these cases, even though they're only a Sveikat the Rabbanon, you should be Machmer, and they should wear tzitzits because of Maris Ayin, the Chidi Isa Shabbos of Ches. Ois Katan Zayim, Beloy Bracha, the Bechari said that they, the Tumtum, the Adragonist, should put on tzitzits without a Bracha, came in the Ikra Chiv, Urak Misham Sveikah, because since the Chiv is only based on a Suffolk, Lady in Bracha, Shehum, and the Rabbanon, as far as the Chi of Bracha goes, a Bracha is only Din Rabbanon. So as Lina Balakula, we go to Kula and you don't make a Bracha. Especially since we don't want to risk a Bracha of Atala. Laisis Hashem Hashav. Vayin Kama Mishibit Sach Zayim, and Mishnabura, Masha Nichtav Sham, Emir Hashem, Kama Klala, Bishem Apais Kumazah. Later on in Sibit Zayin Zayin, in Hilkas Kriyashma, we will discuss this in greater detail. Ayis Kat Ches, Zachros, Vanakvos. The androgynous is somebody who has the physical samanim of both a male and a female. Fuganke in Suffolk Zachar in Nikeva. He's also considered to be a Suffolk Zachar or Nikeva. Fayyan Barnes says, Achaim Chevi Rayim Kam and Bukhim is to Paskinikan Allah to begin their Suffolk. There's always a question there are those Shitas that hold 
that the androgynous, the one who has the, both the samanum of the male and the female, is not a suffix, rather he's a barrier of the atzma, he's like a third gender. But the uh, Chavetz Chaim says that no, we see that lahalacha, we paskin, that he's considered a suffix. Okay, we'll stop over here. Mir Hashem, next time we'll, con- we'll continue with Sif Gimel. Thank you so much for joining me for Leave It This was Leave It On Tyra. Shemim Megan, I got this Klai Yisrael, the Rosh she said, Yeshua's part of Rafus, Parnasa, Shadukim, to all those in need, and we should be Zaycha to see the BS called Tzedek, the Meher of Yamenu Amen. Be well.